It's Beatty. I'm redoing my office. So we are outside today with half my neighbors outside. So I'm going to be talking a little quietly for obvious reasons. Today I'm going to be talking about PE injuries and how they are not as a big deal as some people make them out to be. Basically everything but sides from like nerve damage is curable. So, and even with nerve damage, it just takes a long time to heal. But let, we're going to talk about everything that can happen, how to treat it, and how to avoid it. But before I really get into it, since I do this full time now, I have to talk about my businesses more often. Peak Mel Physique for penis enlargement equipment at a fair price. Patreon for text coaching. And then Leviathan Sups. Jesus. Leviathan Wellness at leviathansubs.com. Uh, Vigor is on Amazon. We are expecting a new supplement to be released in the next two weeks. And then Virility will be back in a month or so. So let's get into it. So like any other injury in the body, there is two ways to classify it. There's minor and then there's major and then there's a spectrum in between. We're going to talk about minor ones first because Almost everyone's going to have some form of that at some point while doing penis enlargement practices. So first one, the most obvious one, is discoloration. So discoloration is when blood gets trapped under the skin and it forms almost a bruise. Um, so this bruise is literally just staining your skin. And it's not an injury, it just does not make you look pretty. The easiest way to avoid that is limit time under pressure. So instead of like pumping for 10 minutes, you do five minutes. If you now do my protocols, it's two minutes. And then like clamping, there's a big bee. He's just dripping nectar. Anyway, if you do clamping, you wanna limit exposure to under five minutes if you're going for like a mechanical damage, which I don't really recommend anymore. Beyond that, you do not want to clamp for more than 10 minutes at a time. Additionally, there's this movement called fire goat rolls now. Now, it's a, probably 20 years old at this point, but you literally just rub your penis together as if you're trying to start a fire for discoloration. You can easily get rid of it by just stopping PE for let's say three to six months because all it is is that discoloration needs to work its way up to the surface and peel off that's how skin uh heals it just kind of grows and falls off it's, con it's constantly shedding so if you want to speed up for that process you can do a skin peel i don't really recommend it because i don't recommend putting any caustic material on your penis but I've done a skin peel on my penis and I saw significant improvements in about two to three weeks. However, if you get any on your glands, since the glands is the thinnest part of that skin, it's going to probably cause a chemical blister. Uh, it only takes two or three days to heal, or a chemical burn rather, but it's not fun, <laughs> okay? So cover your glands with some kind of wrap or cap to protect your skin. Um, I use glycolic acid 50%. You probably don't need to go that high. Try uh, 20 to 30% to start. Go from there. Anything beyond 50% is overkill. Okay, because these are very thin layers of skin. So you don't want to shed the entire lining of your penis. You just want to peel it off layer by layer. Um, it's a once a week treatment, I believe. Then moving up in seriousness we have red dots and it's like petriarchy or something like that that might just be the name for the smell of rain on concrete but essentially red dots is when the blood vessels in your skin burst from the pressure and this really only happens when you pump up too fast so the easiest way to avoid it is to slowly come up to pressure so bath mates are usually like known for this um, it looks like a little rash almost and all you got to do is take a week off to let these blood vessels reform and then pump up slowly. Now, you can technically work through them. However, that's what's really going to cause a crap ton of discoloration. So I do not necessarily recommend it. But if you don't care about appearances that much, by all means, then we have lymphatic buildup. So those who don't know what lymphatic buildup is, 
inside your body we have veins right on the other end that handles garbage is the lymphatic system the lymphatic system lines everything in your body so you'll have these channels all throughout your body including your penis if you pump a lot you're going to pull in a bunch of junk into this lymphatic system of the penis and sometimes these channels get clogged so you'll start developing almost like a hard nodule on your shaft and it's not really an injury because it's not going to cause pain however it's going to look ugly and it's just not going to look normal uh this is a bit out of my wheelhouse my partner doc hank knows much more about <laughs> injury prevention in general but essentially all you do is one stop penis enlargement two is you slowly massage that area to try to get, open up that channel and let the junk flow out since this is a somewhat um slow process it's going to take probably up to two months for it to fully rush out and then the problem with this kind of injury though is that it's kind of nagging so like if you overdo it again there's a good chance you'll get a lymphatic buildup at the same spot because there's a bottleneck in whatever channel that buildup was originally um it also sometimes just goes away on its own because it's part of the garbage disposal system so like you have proteins and uh you have proteins and cells designed to break down this lymphatic buildup and process it so it's not going to like permanently disfigure your penis when it's a lymphatic buildup then we have blisters blisters predominantly happen from vacuum hanging i have seen them with some people that are over zedju over i have seen them with people that are overzealous pumping i have a robin's nest on my porch so if you hear chirping that's it uh so if, but predominantly blisters happen from vacuum hanging and essentially all there's two types of blisters there is um liquid blisters which is when there's an abrasion in your skin and plasma builds up in this little pocket because it's just dead skin fluid begins to fill up that space to protect the raw skin underneath and since you're literally putting a vacuum pressure on it it's just going to pull more fluid and eventually it's going to fill up and you'll notice it these are relatively minor most people say don't pop them uh they go away on their own in about a week and then you need another week off for that skin layer to rebuild the more dangerous ones are blood blisters and that's when you're using way too much pressure for your penis to handle these will build up on the glands normally and it'll be filled with blood that's the one that you want to take probably two to four weeks off of and then when you come back take it much slower now both of these are going to leave like a yes right into the microphone opal come on now most of these are going to leave uh, a noticeable discoloration mark on your glands because that skin needs to keratinize keratinize is the maturation of skin so it's going to look pink and fleshy compared to like your normal brownish tone it's not that big of a deal but again this new skin is uh sensitive because it hasn't built up or matured yet so it's very likely that you'll get a blister in the same spot if you come back too early so then we have a grade one pelvic floor strain it's there's no like real grading system for it i'm just calling it this for simplicity and that's when you strain the muscle slightly so for you runners or basketball players or anyone that does any kind of foot sport <laughs> you have different kinds of ankle sprains a grade one ankle sprain is usually just a twist of the ankle causes inflammation and a bit of structural degradation of the ankle and it takes about a week or two to heal and then if you don't like let it heal properly you can get some stiffness and then that's when it becomes a nagging injury because it's a repetitive strain injury at that point then there's grade two ankle strains sprains where you actually damage something like significantly like i did a partial tear of one of my ligaments in my ankle and that's why i just stopped playing basketball after high school because it kind of just killed the love for the game but anyway so when it comes to penis enlargement pelvic floor strain is one of the more worrisome nuisance injuries and that's a sign of overwork 
in most cases some people get very unlucky and some people just have a very hypertonic pelvic floor so any added pressure raises the chances of injury significantly so you that's why it's so important to take it slow and i'm going to touch more on that later last minor injury which really isn't an injury is what we're calling soft tissue contraction and all that is is a sign of overwork so we have typical heart flaccid symptoms which would be from the pelvic floor uh, you know the pelvic floor strain causing less blood to come into the penis when flaccid therefore making it hard and shriveled and then with overwork of connective tissues one of the stress responses of connective tissues is to contract so if your flaccid is contracted for an extended period of time after your workouts simply put you overdid it so simply take two or three days off cut your workload and then go from there if you need to cut more go ahead but for reference i've been doing this stuff for a decade i have recently moved to every other day for length only doing 30 minutes of strain 10 minutes of pumping and then the tunica release stuff that i've talked about on the reddit and i've seen probably the fastest changes in size since i switched to these less intense more healing and therapeutic focused ideals than the traditional ideals you would see on the old forms so next is major injuries and the first one we're going to talk about is fibrosis now fibrosis is a boogeyman term and essentially what it is is the scarification of the tissues of the penis it's just a, literally a fancy term for scar tissue buildup. <laughs> the way scars are built up is when something's not allowed to set properly so in most cases with penis enlargement fibrosis comes from chronic overwork they, um, some people have a higher genetic propensity for fibrosis but I'm telling you now if you just take it slow and don't do like the crazy stuff that you used to see on thunder's place 20 25 years ago you will see significant changes or you'll see a significant decrease in injury risk then we have nerve damage nerve damage another boogeyman term it's much rarer than most people suspect but it can still happen i'm not trying to downplay it i'm just trying to make sure you guys don't worry about it as much because if you looked on the reddit lately it's just been every other injury is like how often does an injury happen blah 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 and that's why i'm making this video because one person then we'll touch on it in a bit has made a crusade against the injury risk of pe because he injured himself by not listening to me anyway <laughs> um so nerve damage and this is exactly as it sounds you injured your nerves of your penis therefore you lose sensation now most of the time you just piss them off um so you put a lot of pressure on a point it gets angry it resets um the problem is these reset periods take anywhere from like two weeks to six months depending on how much you pissed it off and then this is even more rare but you can technically sever the nerve if you're using the wrong kind of equipment so that's why me and my partner hank do not recommend any kind of noose hanger or extender because it puts so much pressure right on the budinal nerve that it can kind of slowly uh rub away at it and s potentially sever it but that's very unlikely but it's not not impossible impossible the uh, best way to avoid nerve damage is taking it slow so again we'll talk a lot more about avoidance in a bit you have to be very unlucky to have significant nerve damage after pe because in most cases you'll be more sensitive after doing these practices because the entire idea is you want to release these growth factors without stressing out these tissues so if you can release the growth factors without changing the or degrading in the baseline productivity of these nerves for example um they'll be more sensitive as time goes on so if you start losing sensation the gist is you want to take a break because that means there's a few reasons for that and i'll touch more on it in a bit i've been saying that a lot in this video huh 
Then the next big one is grade two pelvic floor strain. So grade two pelvic floor strains. We talked about grade one, which is a minor uh, damage to the pelvic floor and it usually heals on its own. Then you have grade two. Grade two would be where you do significant damage. So that'd be like partially tearing a tendon in your pelvic floor, for example, or bruising a muscle to the point where it can no longer contract properly or you like shock it into the point where it can no longer contract. Um, again, these are curable. However, like any nagging injury, if you let it sit proper, improperly, so if you let it heal improperly, there's a good chance it will not function properly afterwards. So you'll see a bunch of people who injure their hip and then they never take care of it, never do the therapy for their hip. And then they're walking funny for the rest of their life because they didn't do the 10 minutes of physiotherapy they needed to fix their hip in the first place. So now it's going to take so much more work to get beyond it. So the real answer to fixing pelvic floor strain is reverse kegels, which is the push out motion downtown, if you know what I'm saying. So when you pee and when you poo, that's a reverse kegel, that sensation. Then there's a bunch of little yoga exercises you can do where we apply a stretching pressure to the pelvic floor by pulling on our legs and since everything's connected in some fashion tension say on your hip adductors and flexors will then pull on the pelvic floor muscles causing them to stretch because what we're trying to do is avoid them from being in this very flexed state after they heal and the same thing with the ligaments you don't want them to get tense Lind ligaments, tendons, tendons connect muscles to bone. Anyway, and then finally, with and this goes for all injuries, is relax. So grade one, grade two pelvic floor strains, the more tensed up you are over these injuries, the more likely they are to heal tensed because you're tense, therefore those muscles are gonna be tense. Therefore, it's gonna be much harder for them to relax. So it's highly important to stay calm when you're injured because 99% of the time it is healable, it's fixable. You just got to put the work in to fix it, okay? Or just take time off, avoidance. First, limit strain. So there is a reason why I have so many recommendations for time, weight, and progressions on the Reddit. And it's simply put is to avoid injury. The guy that really sparked this video finally told me what he did and he said he did three pounds of two hours of hanging. He was thinking the weight was not enough to cause any significant strain. That's far from the case. If we think about strain in a sense for penis enlargement, you have two variables, time and weight. The more weight you use, the less time you need. The less, or the more time you use, the less weight you need. However, beginners I only recommend do length work for at most 20 to 25 minutes to start he did two hours immediately was injured and then started complaining about it for two months so I really just wanted to set the record straight with this video first of all to calm you all down about this so the gist is no one should do penis enlargement for more than an hour a day, period. Uh, based off of what I've been seeing, we can measure how effective it is with strain rate, with pre-flaccid stretch length over post-flaccid stretch length. If that's in the ratio that you need, which is two to 4% longer, you don't need any more work. Additionally, if we look at a therapeutic sense, like I have been for the beginning of, since the beginning of this year, um, You don't see your physiotherapist or your chiropractor more than once to one or two times a week normally, right? Because soft tissues take a long time to heal. So we need to pri prioritize healing over the amount of work we're doing when it comes to all soft tissues. It's that simple if you want to think about it logically. Now the problem is, is that so many people took devices... <laughs> So many people took advice from dysmorphic fuckers, right? And I was one of them, so I'm not, I'm not blaming anyone really. But these guys would say we needed this much work 
to see any chance of gaining because they're in their um, anxious mind it was better to do too much than not enough but that's far from the case even with bodybuilding right you're better off actually underworking with bodybuilding than you are overworking with bodybuilding because of a whole slew of reasons cortisol response overtraining rhabdo um all kinds of things well i don't see why penis enlargement should be any different other than the fact that the tissues are different so yeah first and foremost limit strain two prioritize rest which is on the same kind or on the same coin as limiting strain like i've said already i've switched to every other day my erections have never been better my flaccid has never been bigger and if we just look at this week i put on three sixteenths of an inch in my stretch flaccid length by moving to this <laughs> protocol yeah it sounds crazy i don't even believe it yet to be honest but what i'm saying is is i'm doing a quarter of my work that i did last year and it seems that i'm growing faster so if i'm right and if you look at my track record I have been quite a bit lately. <laughs> um, a lot of you guys are just doing plain too much work and it's actually detrimental to your gains. And we touched on this already. Number three was to disregard anything from that is five years old or older. So, again, like I said, a lot of these people, they don't really understand the physiological processes of P.E., so they would err on the caution as more is more than less is more. But like, if you look at any literature on soft tissue reformation, aside from wearing braces, which this isn't really anything like now that we know that it's more like tendon, ligament, fascia repair. Uh, so we're not changing bones or changing soft tissues. Soft tissues have their own built-in response to uh, stress bones as well but bones are meant to take immense pressures that's why you need to do so much more work to reform the jaw with braces for example with penis enlargement with uh flexibility training you don't need nearly as much time under tension and in fact anything over say 30 minutes of strain for tendons and penises is probably well over what we actually need if you're doing the sufficient work um and i'm not going to try to throw shade but like even with like stuff from say 2018 on reddit um i've gotten actually reports from some of those like hey i did what this guy said but I only did 20 minutes of it and I already have hard flaccid symptoms. It's like, well, yeah, uh, it's clamping is not meant to be done for extended periods of time based off of therapeutic research. If we don't let our arms, which are more built for this kind of strain, right, go under for more than, say, 10 to 15 minutes, why in hell would we apply a stint to our penis for more than 10 to 15 minutes? because we're trying to mimic pre-prism well the thing is is we're trying to mimic pre-prism we are literally trying to hurt ourselves right because we're cutting off blood flow that's why pre-prism is so dangerous because it cuts off blood flow to the penis but since it's one of the only few known medical examples of significant girth gains a lot of uh veterans use that as an example of why we need to do clamping for an hour every other day but really, if you look at the therapies, which is what I'm prioritizing now, like I said, probably three times in this video, we need to slow down, really reassess what is needed for growth rather than what we assume is needed for growth. Because again, a lot of us are sick in the brain when it comes to body dysmorphia and stuff. We're probably terrified that if we don't do enough, we're not going to get any gains. So... <laughs> You need to trust the system. It's been a bit of a shock for me, if I'm being honest, with how little work I have to do, and I'm getting such better results because of it. But that's neither here nor there. I hope what I've talked about on this video calms some of you down. But 
again, all this stuff is curable. A lot of this stuff will actually just go away on its own. So just keep that in mind. Anything else I am missing? Okay. So I'm going to go into the deluge of my office, get this edited, and we'll go from there. Um, I got another video planned. It's just I got to find time to do it between all the orders on Peak Male Physique, uh, Leviathan Sup's progress, and my Patreon coaching, which I'm slacking on, and with the consultations that I took down for the time being because I'm behind. But I needed to get something out because this guy bothered me a bit too much for my own good. So, anyway, I will talk to you all later.